Hello everybody, this is Nojo from Thranda Design. Today we're taking a quick look at the Caravan's Bendix King KFC 225 Autopilot. Let's do it. So here we are in the pilot seat. We've just started the engine and we haven't turned any of the systems on yet. Now our autopilot, uh, we've simulated the Bendix King KFC 225 Autopilot, and that's this guy right here. So it's a little small, so I'm going to click on it, and that'll bring up the pop-up for it. And we can adjust the size of the pop-up by clicking and dragging on the, the lower right corner, so that'll make it easier to see. So I'll keep it up here on the screen for us. Now as we turn on systems, we'll turn on the, uh, the avionics master switch, and we can see this goes into a pre-flight test mode. And this is just a built-in test, automatically does it. Uh, it'll start counting up, and right about now, there it goes, it'll get to, um, it's completed the test and it shows all the display elements. So now, the autopilot's ready to use. We have the altitude selector here, and that can be adjusted with this alt cell, altitude select knob here. So let's set this, um, let's go up to 3,500 feet. Now I'm going to skip ahead to right after takeoff, and we'll take a look at uh, how we engage the autopilot and the different modes and what they do. So here we are in the climb. Let's get this autopilot set up. So I'm going to go down here to the HSI and adjust the heading bug to center it up with our current heading. And uh, for now, let's just engage flight director mode. So now this engages the autopilot, uh, the brain of the autopilot, but the servos are not actually engaged. So I'm still hand flying the airplane. But it put us into roll mode. In this case, when you first turn it on, it'll be a, a roll hold mode, or wings level mode. And then the next is a pitch hold mode. So that'll hold the current pitch when we engage this. And you can see the yellow flight director bars came up on the uh, attitude indicator. There they are. And then also over here, this is our autopilot mode panel. It shows we're in flight director uh, mode, but nothing else. So let's engage the autopilot servos by clicking the AP button. Now I can take my hands off the controls and the autopilot's flying it for us. And we can see AP is initiated here, as well as the yaw damper turned on. And then over here on the mode panel, uh, AP and yaw dampener also. So when we're in roll and pitch hold mode, uh, if, if I disturb the airplane and let go, it'll come back to what it was. Uh, so for pitch, we can adjust that pitch attitude. If we go down, 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 I'm just giving individual clicks you can see it's lowering the nose, and same with up. And if you press and hold, it'll go by around two and a half degrees per second or, or thereabouts. And so that'll slowly pitch us up or slowly pitch us down. Now we're coming up on our altitude. Let's actually go up to 4,500, give ourselves a little more room. And we notice when I moved the altitude select knob, it automatically armed the altitude hold. And now we have an alert telling us we're within a thousand feet of our altitude. If we don't want altitude armed, the plane will just keep climbing. It'll ignore this setting. But with it armed, it should automatically level off to 4,500. Now while it does that, uh, let's also talk about if you set up a button on your yoke to the control wheel steering. I'm going to press and hold that now. You see the autopilot servos disconnected. I'm going to reposition the plane and let go. And it re-engages the servos and it'll hold that new roll. If your roll is within, I think it's about six degrees of bank, it'll go to wings level like that, but if you're more than six degrees of bank, it'll just hold your, uh, your bank when you let go of the control wheel steering button. So now, because we had the altitude armed, it's leveling us off at 4,500 feet, just like it's supposed to. Good job. Now, if we want to be able to control this with the heading bug, uh, right now our heading bug's over here, I'm going to click in the center to center it up. Let's go to heading mode. That's another one of our lateral modes. And now, as we adjust the heading bug, the plane will turn to follow that heading bug. So let's talk about climbs and descents. So right now we're in altitude hold mode, so it's just gonna hold 4,500 feet. Let's say we actually wanna go down to uh, 4,000 feet. So I've adjusted the altitude selector. We've armed the altitude, but we're still holding 4,500 for now. So we can either um, disconnect altitude to go to pitch mode and use the up and down to command a descent, or my favorite, go to vertical speed mode. This will capture your current vertical speed when you engage that. And notice how it went back to altitude. So in VS mode, if we click down, it goes to vertical speed mode. While vertical speed mode is shown, we can click repeatedly to set that vertical speed. And similarly to pitch, we can press and hold, and it'll tick uh, smoothly around. So altitude is armed, so it should level us off once we get to 4,000 feet. So generally the sequence when you're going to change altitude, oh, 
fast here. I'm just going to pull that power back. Uh, when you want to change altitude, the sequence is first you'll set your new altitude with the altitude select wheel, then switch to vertical speed mode. Oh, here we can see it. It's capturing our altitude. Um, yeah, so first we're going to set our new altitude. We're going to go up to 4,500. It is armed. Now we go to vertical speed mode. And we go up, 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 up. We want 1,000 feet per minute. And then you'll have to manually add power. I'm bringing our torque close to our red line up here. Um, because the autopilot's not that smart, and there's no auto throttle. If you tell it to climb at 2,000 feet per minute, it will until the airplane stalls. And then the autopilot goes, oh, we're stalling. Boom, I give up. And it gives the plane back to you. So just be careful about that. So this is our heading mode, follows our heading bug, and vertical speed mode to move to altitudes. Now, let's take a look at some of the approach modes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to a different airport so that we can do that. Be right back. So here we are getting set up for the ILS runway two approach into Kahului, Hawaii. That's Papa Hotel Oscar Golf. We've got the ILS frequency 110.1 set in the active nav one frequency spot and we're on VLOC mode. So the HSI is set to the inbound course 024, and we're currently on radar vectors heading 330 and 3000 feet. So let's say uh, the approach controllers give us the instruction to send and maintain 2500. So we'll roll the altitude select down to 2500, altitude is armed, go to VS mode, and click down to 500 or 700 feet per minute. And I, the caravan's non-pressurized, so I wouldn't recommend descending faster than about 700 feet per minute, just for passenger comfort. So the autopilot's bringing us down. It should, uh, altitude's armed, so it should level off at 2,500. Now, let's say we're also given the instruction, um, uh, maintain 2,500 until established, cleared runway two approach. So what we have here is we have a nav, our nav frequency is set, and we're on heading mode right now, so we're just following the heading bug. But nav and approach mode are very, very similar. And we can arm. Let's arm nav mode. So what that does, oh, we're capturing our altitude. Um, as this co course comes in, uh, the autopilot would automatically switch over from nav mode being armed, and we can see here nav mode is armed, to nav mode coupled. Uh, and then it'll turn and follow that course. Now the difference between nav and approach mode approach is what we want in this case because once approach is coupled and it's following the course then it will additionally arm the glide slope which is what we want for the ILS approach. So we're getting close but let me fast forward here real quick just so that we can get up to the uh, the localizer intercept. All right look at that the localizer is coming alive so any moment now there it is so approach has gone from arm to coupled and now glide slope is armed. And notice, most of the time vertical nav modes are over here on the right, but glide slope is there in the lower left when it's armed. It's just how it works. So uh, the airplane's turning itself. The heading bug is no longer needed, so we can set this to our missed approach heading, whatever that may be. In this case, it's gonna be runway heading, so I'll manually set that. And now we see we have the glide slope pointers coming in. Now, I'm not gonna do the full approach procedures for this demonstration, we're just looking at the autopilot, but um, our airspeed's good, so we are ready for the descent. So, right now we're currently in approach mode following that nav course, and we're in altitude hold mode following 2,500 feet, but glide slope is armed, and once this comes in, once those needles center up, there it goes, now glide slope is active, and we can see glide slope came active here. So now our two active modes are approach and glide slope. And here we're free to change our altitude select to the missed approach altitude, whatever that may be, to get ready for the missed approach. Now, um, this will take us all the way down to the runway and then we'll disconnect before landing. Uh, but let's say we wanted to disconnect our autopilot. So we have this autopilot disconnect button here on the yoke and you can assign that in X-Plane. Uh, and when you press it, boop, it's gonna kick off the autopilot and the flight director and notice how the yaw damper also turned off. Now. On the other hand, let's say we'll just engage autopilot, roll and pitch, it's gonna hold the current roll and pitch. If we press this button to turn the autopilot servos off, it turns the servos off, so now we're hand flying the plane again, but the flight director and the yaw damper remain on. So just one little note about that, make sure before landing you turn that yaw damper off. What it's doing, if I step on the rudder pedal and then I let go, 
it's going to dampen out those oscillations. With it off, we step on the rudder pedal, and it's going to jiggle around a little bit more. But what that does is it's inputting rudder inputs, and so once you touch down, uh, you don't want the autopilot inputting rudder stuff for you. So make sure the yaw damper is off before landing. And then the last mode to talk about is this REV, uh, reverse sensing. So it's essentially back course mode, works the same as nav, except it's specifically designed to follow a back course for like a, a localizer back course approach, kind of very specific situation where otherwise you'd get reverse sensing. We can see we're still set 0, 2, 4, but we're actually coming in the opposite direction. Now as the localizer comes in, uh, nav mode or reverse sensing mode uh, activates and it's going to turn us inbound on that reverse course. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed this quick look at the Caravan's autopilot, uh, that Benix King KFC 225 and the different modes of it. It definitely makes flying a lot easier when used properly. Whoops. Uh, but when used improperly like that, it uh, makes it trickier. Make sure you watch your airspeed. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please join me on the next video. I think we're going to start getting into engine start, taxi takeoff, and all that fun stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. I will see you there.